What's up, Wikimaniacs? On today's episode, we have a shallow best friend, a husband who wants to be told what to do, a listener has an issue with someone wearing white to their wedding, parents miss their son's wedding, OP isn't happy with his sister's partner, and an OP tells his ex that only he gets to make parental decisions. For the Patreon exclusive stories, we have an OP who didn't try for a girl and a wife is too sweaty. If those sound interesting to you and you want day early episodes as well as ad free, head on over to patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network and sign up today. Reddit on wiki starts now. What's up, Wikimaniacs? It's your boy Josh here for Am I the Asshole Friday. Uh, today, I've got the one and only uh, John Consignato. What's up, buddy? Hi, guys. I don't know if you can see, but there's a special appearance of newly neutered Kevin on the side. So I don't know if y'all can see him, but he's right there with his cone of shame. Got three more days, buddy. You can do it. Oh, he's a little cutie. He's a sad little puppy right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three more days and then he's free. Three more days and you're free. You can run around and get all the zoomies you want. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's a solo uh, Am I the Asshole for John today. Uh, Sean's off doing a wedding setup. Uh, oh. So I think he's he, he told me how many people it was and it's an insane amount of people that they're setting this wedding up for. <laughs> it's taking three days, which is why he's not here. <laughs> Y'all, Sean is stressed out. Give that boy a break. Actually, send him some Venmo to make him feel a little better (laughs) because he's overworked, so stressed. I don't like that for my boy. Nah, he's fine. He's fine. We just keep working. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That's true. Um, So, yeah. So, John, we did this with Sean last month. What I'm going to do for you today is if you get majority of the stories correct... I will give you one point. If you get all of the stories correct, I'll give you two points. How's that sound? That sounds good to me, but I I don't know. This might be a little harder for me because I got no one to bounce off with. (laughs) True. You don't have anyone to uh, ride the coattails of if it's a hard one. (laughs) Exactly. Damn. So I I have a feeling I'm not going to get majority of these right, man. I'm I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I need Sean. That's fair. Yeah. But I I say you get majority of them right most most episodes. Uh, True. So you'll True. get a, you'll probably get one point, I would imagine. Maybe. Hopefully. The betting odds on uh, one point <laughs> five. Are- <laughs> we have now become a gambling podcast <laughs> with zero sponsor. <laughs> zero sponsor. Uh, all right. Let's start off with the first one here. Cross posted by one of the goats. First per Sean Energy, Ooh. and the title is "Am I the asshole for calling my best friend shallow and vain?" Uh. I'm going to try to channel my inner Sean here. Okay. Um, I feel like this friend was venting to the OP about something. And Mm. they're just like, hey, this is my situation. Um, And they just kind of wanted like a shoulder or like an ear to listen to them. And they gave unsolicited advice. And they're just like (laughs) being a dick about it. That's what I, I think. That's I feel like that's what Sean would say in this situation. So. Gotcha. Let's go with asshole for this one. Okay. I like it. I like it. Channeling your your Sean with the uh, Yeah. <laughs> with the crossbows from first per Sean energy. So look at I like that. It. I like Holy it. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. Well, let's kick it off with the uh, asshole for the first call here. So I exclusively see men who aren't attractive. That is just my <laughs> preference. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna channel another Sean Seanism here. Okay, I feel like this is one of those scenes. And okay, so you know how he always refers to everything in like pop culture or some sort of like a TV show. Yeah, this is kind of like 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> where there's a there's a person there. Uh, I think her name is Jasmine, and she's with some guy named Gino. And okay. I don't know. It's kind of the same vibe that he's not really like the best looking dude, and she's like. A hot girl right so it, it gives me the same vibe. and she's only with them because she feels maybe like, more secure that like you know she's hot and she ain't gonna go nowhere but. got it okay 
Okay. We'll we'll see if that's where the story goes. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it's gonna give it right 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 here. I feel threatened <laughs> by men who are too attractive. <laughs> The shotisms work. <laughs> it does. I had a guy into me recently that was far too pretty. I felt uncomfortable around him and was worried when I wasn't wearing makeup that people thought he was better looking and dating out of his league. I was worried people would think he was everything and I was just there. I know that's silly, but despite being a nice guy, I just couldn't do it. My friends all loved him. My best friend Zara messaged me on her way to college and said there was a guy on her bus who was insanely beautiful. I knew he was on the bus and asked her to give me details, and it was him. She called me lucky, but I never felt that way. I like to be better looking than the guys I'm with. It's not just a me thing. I've seen tons of girls slash people on TikTok that prefer to date ugly guys because they feel more secure and prefer to be the better looking ones. I know my algorithm knows me, but still, it isn't just me. I don't. That's a Wait. wild... <laughs> yeah, hold on. Did, I don't know if I heard that correctly. They're saying like... They're a nice guy or uh, no, the no, no. Person? They're saying that the guy that was into her is a nice guy. That's what she was saying. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, wait, I heard nice guy. I don't know. Like, to me, I, it just like something clicked in my head. I'm like, is this written by an incel or some shit? <laughs> I mean, it could be, uh, you never know with Reddit. Um, True. but yeah, I, I think, uh, as so far, I think this is a weird way to look at it. Cause you're just, We've talked about this with many guys, but this is the other mm-hmm. way where it's you're yeah. just looking at people as what they look like. Skin a physical deep. appearance. Exactly. Yeah. And so pretty shitty uh, right off the bat. Very much so. So I also feel like I'm doing them a favor. I was dating this guy, Zach, and I was drinking with my friends. He was asleep. They asked why in the world I rejected hot guy who seemed to be into me if I thought Zach was cuter. I admitted that I don't think he's cuter. He's ugly, but that's fine with me. I like guys that will bend over backwards for me that feel like they've lucked out. Like this, <laughs> <laughs> like this weekend, I had left my laptop over at my mom's house and he had to drive two hours to go pick it up for me. He will do anything I tell him to and you can't get that with an attractive man. I don't I, like her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very clearly just dating... Uh, people that aren't quote unquote conventionally attractive yeah. so that she can use them is not a great. Uh, so OP, you're just openly admitting to Reddit that you're a manipulator. Yes. <laughs> just exactly. like that for free. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to get it out of her in the comments. <laughs> exactly. It uh, goes on to say, I feel, a, uh, I like feeling a little control. And plus I feel like I'm doing them a favor because they get to be with someone attractive. Zara spoke up and said she found it messed up. I didn't want an equal. I wanted someone who would do whatever I said and makes it a weird dynamic. I wasn't expecting her to say that and I was filled with rage. She gets with exclusively really attractive men. They are smart and driven and always nearly perfect looking. I'm the nice one not dating for looks and she's coming for me. (laughs) I'm the good one. Oh, oh boy. the delusion is strong. The delusion it is very strong. much so. So I said she was the one who was in the wrong and she was shallow and vain. She rolled her eyes and said, Most people date people they find attractive. Yes, a hundred percent. Facts. <laughs> I mean I kept, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That's like sometimes that's just your you know, your biological uh reaction. Yeah. Like, oh, if you find someone attractive, of course you're gonna wanna, you know, like at least get to know them. Right, exactly. And I mean like uh, attraction goes in multitude of different like it personality yeah. is attractive uh you know there's and so calling him ugly is like i don't know shallow shitty. as hell yeah shallow yeah. <laughs> uh but op says i kept calling her shallow and she ended up leaving the next day <laughs> zach admitted that he heard our conversation and was set upset <laughs> at what i said calling him ugly and saying he felt used in our relationship i was horrified and didn't know what to say so i told him to ignore all of that My friends are rude and shallow. We're great. He asked if I really find him ugly, and I said I didn't know what to say. The truth is, he is a bit ugly, but I told him I love. (laughs) Damn! But I told him I love ugly guys. Damn! (laughs) He didn't respond, but seemed upset, and I probably should have lied. So, am I the asshole, or do I need to dump my shallow friends? Look. I don't even have to say anything, right? Josh, I think there's a perfect button for you to press in this scenario. 
You need to take a long look in the mirror, bud. <laughs> My point exactly. That's wow. all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, is that you? <laughs> I feel like he should get a point just for that. <laughs> oh my god, this is just uh, it's it's wild that uh, we've said a lot of it during the story, which is uh, oh I think yeah. Sometimes we've have an issue with where we don't wait till the end, but uh, most of what we said, she is a shallow person who is just looking at her partner as someone that she can manipulate and use in this situation. Oh yeah. Uh, she doesn't care about him as a person um, and just wants to use him. And that's a terrible way to look at a relationship. So the irony of you calling your friend the shallow person is insane. Uh, I don't I don't care if she dates like conventionally attractive people like your friend. She's probably dating them for more reasons than that. Uh, at, at least yeah. more reasons than you are dating your partner. Uh, so. Your reasons <laughs> for dating, quote unquote, you know, lesser attractive guys or uglier guys are for nefarious reasons. Exactly. It's not even just, it's not even just, oh, uh, maybe I'm attracted to their personality more. I don't care much about looks. No, you want them to be like a servant to you essentially. So dude, I don't know how you wrote this on Reddit and don't think that you're the asshole. But again, that Sean button, <laughs> perfect for this scenario. Yeah. So going into that there, uh, Reddit didn't, have time to deem them asshole or not the asshole because it was taken down so quickly but we are deeming them asshole <laughs> but it was cross-posted on am i the devil so i think that goes to speak to how most people feel about op <laughs> um, which at this point she might be yeah yeah and then uh commenter carrie purple said uh quote this was written by a dude cosplaying as a pretty girl he <laughs> saw once she was dating someone he perceived as ugly and he assumes this is what's going on through her head and i think you kind of brought that up uh that this is you know written by a nice guy <laughs> i mean and i feel like most women don't really you know, put nice guy in the story unless it's flaming them right but yeah. in this story is just you just kind of sprinkle that a little too casually. Makes me kind of think you're one of them. Yeah, it's it's definitely there was a lot of like red flags in there that was like this feels like a guy writing it. If it's not, everything we said still stands no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, just a just a you know a flag I wanted to raise for everyone. You never know. You never know who it could be behind the the username. <laughs> Hey, man, all, all I could say is these damn ADHD meds are fucking kicking in because I'm starting to be like my brain functionally and I can catch little <laughs> things here and there. Holy crap. I should have had this my whole life. <laughs> you're like on su your superpowers. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. I can like think now. <laughs> is that a, is this a meta? Is that movie? Uh, what was the one where Bradley Cooper? Oh, takes with a Bradley drug? Cooper. Um, they did a show on it. Shoot, too. shoot, 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 shoot. Um, uh, I know what you're talking about. Limitless. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. You, it is. It is. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Where he takes a drug and then he just uh, on on it. Um, yeah. They did a TV show spinoff, I, like. I think, of it. I think so. I but think it so. That was a his, while. That was a while back. I don't think it lasted very long. No, because I think the issue with it, I watched a little bit of it. They mm. really nerf him after the first episode because it's like you can't just have a superhuman person solving all these crimes or whatever he was doing because <laughs> <laughs> he would That's do true. it instantly and it wouldn't be a show. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was a wild niche callback, but uh, <laughs> let's hop into the next story here. Uh, cross posted by another goat, Phoebe the fan. And this one is titled, am I the asshole for telling my wife she needs to stop complaining and tell me what to do if she needs help around the house? Automatic. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I'll, I'll preface this though. Like I, I'm, I'm openly admitting that like I need to work on that pers uh, personally at times. Like, uh, I do need to stop being reminded like at certain points. So like I need to step up. So I'm calling myself an asshole for that situation. <laughs> uh, and, and I don't know. And, and yeah, like sometimes you just got to acknowledge like, Hey, maybe you need to step up and, and, and help out more around the house. And like, if you keep saying that, like, Hey, this person got to remind me your wife is not your mother. So like they shouldn't actually your mother should even have to remind you a bunch of yes. times. You know what I mean? So like <laughs> you're an adult <laughs> step up and do right by your partner. Um, marriage might not be always 50 50 at times, but my guy, try your best. That's all I can yeah. say. Exactly. Yeah, and you're hundred percent right that chores are not always split 50 50, but yeah. they should be split uh 50 50 based on like what each of you do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like absolutely. 
I work from home, so I do a lot of the the chores around the house because I have the time. I don't have a t- mm. you know hour commute, so um, yeah, you're right on on the money with a lot of that. So uh, let's hop into it and see if you are correct. Uh, first sentence gets real close to the Sean rule, and I'm wondering <laughs> how you feel about this, John. Ooh, okay, all right. So my wife, thirty female, and I, forty six male, have been together for four years and married for three. We also have a two-year-old together. So she so was 30 tw- female. She was 26 and he was 42, f- 42 when they got married. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. <clears throat> it is okay. Like it's just, it's, it's beyond very, 20, it's beyond 25. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, technically yeah. I just would be curious of what asterisk Sean would add to the rule <laughs> if he heard this story. Yeah. Uh, so did they just start their relationship at 26 though? Is that the... Well, he says they've been together for four years and married for three. So presumably th- that four years encompasses when they Maybe. got together. I don't know. Anyway, it's a, it's a side. I'm not Sean, so I can't deem. <laughs> <laughs> True. We'll call him up. Um, when our child was born, we would agree that she would be a stay at home mom and I would be the breadwinner. I work eight to five and my wife is at home. Recently, my wife has been complaining that I don't do enough around the house when I'm at home. I agree that she works hard, but I'm exhausted working 45 hours a week. When I get home in the evening or on the weekend, I just want to sleep or watch my TV show. She says she's always tired, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. I don't mind babysitting our child for a a bit to give her a breather or put the dishes in the dishwasher. Babysitting your (laughs) child. It's your child. That would fucking mean you're babysitting your child. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that one would get you. (laughs) The fuck? Yeah, it's not babysitting when it is your kid. It, it is, is yours. Watching your child. Uh, weird. Um, so I don't mind putting dishes in the dishwasher, but she needs to tell me if she needs me to do that. She says she shouldn't have to tell me to spend time with my own kid or take the trash out when I notice it's full. Yes, that is 100% yeah. uh, true. <laughs> yes. Uh, I guess she wants me to do more, but I'm also tired and I don't think it's fair of her to expect me to come home and want to do more work. She agreed to be the homemaker while I bring in the income. So I'm doing more than my fair share of the work for our family. Absolutely not. Quick question, dude. You said you work 45 hours a week. How many hours are in a week, John? Uh, Do you know? Boy, don't ask me about math. (laughs) Damn it. I was hoping your super brain would come up. 24 times seven. That is. 168. I looked it up. Okay. I didn't want us to wait too much. So you work. So you work 40. Five hours of that week. Guess what, buddy? Your wife is working 168 of those hours, right? Yeah. I mean, she is sleeping there she somewhere, does sleep. but so she is working deduct, more. <laughs> deduct that, right? So your your wife is definitely working more. And yeah. not only that, is you're compounding the work, not even just like the physical labor itself, you're compounding the mental strain on her. For her to like take mm-hmm. the time and take the energy to remind you to to take out the trash when you fucking see it's full or when you unload the dishwasher or put plates on a dishwasher when you know it needs to be loaded, she could have had like five minutes of like fucking just clear mind, right? Or just like a total break. Or decompressing. (laughs) Or decompressing. Or she can just like hop in a shower, like take a nice like hot bath to show like she's she's out of that element, right? Of being like a mom 24-7. The fact that you got to be reminded for that. And again- I said it like on my, like my, my, uh, the first, uh, the, the prediction, essentially I'm guilty of, of sometimes I have to get reminded. Right. Yeah. But Hey, when I see the trash is full, buddy, guess what? I'm taking that bitch to the bin off the bat. Right. If the plate is, uh, dishwasher's full, I'm unloading that shit. Cause my wife cooked, she did all the things ready. Least I can do is, you know, do that. Step in and do stuff like Step that. In. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the crazy <laughs> thing is she has to ask you. To take care of your own goddamn kid. Yeah. It takes two to tango. It takes two people to create that. She put all the work already on like carrying that baby for nine months. Did like the however many hours of labor, the pain, the recovery, yada, yada. My guy, 45 hours a week that you work. Hang out with your kid. Yeah. Spend time with your kid. <laughs> yeah. Give doesn't... your wife a break. <laughs> <laughs> also, 45 hours, I don't think that's... You definitely get breaks in there, so, you know. And she doesn't. Yeah. And she doesn't get those. <laughs> yeah. So, she doesn't get that. Uh, anyway, I'll finish up here. I think the verdict will be quick, but... Uh, oh, yeah. 
He goes on to say, before we got married, we decided we wanted at least two children, but now she's saying I need to pull up my socks before we start trying again. This sparked a huge argument and I told her she needs to stop complaining and tell me how I can help at home if she needs my support. She called me a lazy ass and took our children and went to sleep at her brother's. Later on, her friends started blowing up my phone telling me I'm lucky she hasn't divorced me yet. So am I the asshole? <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Buddy. I know it doesn't oh translate through God. audio, but John was dumbstruck by the <laughs> last paragraph. <laughs> so they have two children already? No, they want to have. Oh, they want two children, right? When they went into this, they wanted to have two children. Two. So they have now, one right now? They have a two-year-old, yeah. So she has she has two children she's taking care of right now. Yep. <laughs> your baby and your bitch ass. Yeah. So they have Buddy, the two children. <laughs> it's you. That just, you know, that can work and pay taxes. Dude, yeah. uh, okay. So, uh, man, like, you know, if I bet you if your wife had the opportunity to just be like, hey, I want to go back to work. I feel like that would be like more, gra- uh, like, you know, like more satisfying, gratifying for her too. Uh, and you just well, can't she would say at least like, get like, uh, you know, like when you work a job, you at least get compensated and like exactly uh, uh, told you're doing a good job or like there's <laughs> oh with, yeah with stay at home mom with this with this man with and being a stay at home mom, you're not getting any like uh, acknowledgement that you're doing a good, like no. a job or free uh, labor man yeah he just, he just looks at you as you have to deal with everything and uh, I don't have to do any of the housework. Which is not how it works. <laughs> this dude is like classic 1950s guy. He well, thinks he was almost he's born still back in that then, era. John. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Damn, boomer. <laughs> I apologize to any 46 year olds listening. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just dunking on him. I'm not dunking on you. At your old age of 46 <laughs> years old. <laughs> uh, so I couldn't find <sighs> the original, but our subreddit seemed to deem them the asshole, obviously. Um, Easy. Easy and verdict. On, on our subreddit, still cockroach seven five seven three said, "You live in a house. You're an adult. I feel like it should be obvious that when you see laundry that needs to go in the dryer or trash that needs to be taken out, you do it. Because it, yep. if you live in the house and it's your laundry and it's your trash and it takes thirty seconds, <laughs> and they also say, I feel like the babysitting your child thing is pretty self-explanatory. Don't have oh, kids yeah. if you don't want to raise them and be involved in their life." My father was like this. We don't have a good relationship because we never bonded, even though we lived in the same home. And I think that is, uh, sums up what we said pretty, pretty uh, well. So uh, shout out to still cockroach for that one. Yeah, man, dude, you can oh. incorporate some chores while catching up with your shows. Like Sundays, yes. Sundays. I, I tell my wife, I'm like, Hey, it's football, football season. But guess what? I'm popping in the laundry. So while I'm watching a game, I'm like folding, you know, or like yeah. just, putting stuff away while like there's commercial. So you can still help buddy. I, I literally do. I listen to podcasts when I do anything. Uh, and so you could do that with, uh, with television shows or whatever. You can throw it on the laptop, throw it on the bed. It takes me forever. Fold. Yeah. It, but does. it still gets yeah. done. <laughs> it gets done. <laughs> it still gets done. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, today I was doing laundry and, and taking out the dishes and I was just listening to like a hockey podcast I listened to. And yeah, that's just a way I get to do both things that I enjoy. Exactly. Um, so yeah, but if you want more time in your life, consider the upcoming sponsors that we have, uh, and we're going to take an ad break and be right back. So stay tuned. It's fall season, but don't fall into the habit of not eating well. (sighs) You autumn checkout factor. (laughs) Seriously. This is how we're doing the ad read. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. We get it. Making meals is time-consuming. But with Factor, you get to skip the extra trip to the grocery store, skip all the laborious parts of prepping, and you get to avoid cleaning duties. All you have to do is put one of Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals in the microwave, and with two minutes you'll have a nutritious and flavorful meal waiting for you. Oh my gourd, there's more. (laughs) You get to choose from 35 plus weekly flavored packed, fresh never frozen meals packed with delicious recipes like cranberry pecan chicken and apple Dijon pork chops. And if you're bougie like me, level up your culinary experience with the gourmet plus option and treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like my favorite truffle butter. Guys, don't leaf. The Wikimaniacs hanging. 
<laughs> okay. I'm tired of you both. Just tell the Wikimaniacs where they can get Factor. It sounds like Sean doesn't appreciate the acorny puns. Hey, yo. Hey. But Wikimaniacs, you can appreciate this special deal when you head to factormeals.com slash wiki50 and use the code wiki50 to get 50% off. That's code wiki50 at factormeals.com slash wiki50 to get 50% off. Thank you, Factor, for supporting the show. And we are back. John, nice. you're killing it two for two so far. Uh, so far. <laughs> I just want that extra bonus point, you know? That's all I want. Yeah, I mean... Listen, if you, even if you go up to Sean has the exact same chance next week because <laughs> it's going to be just me and him, uh, just how our schedule is working out. Uh, oh, that's true. Oh, you potentially could. Be I am going to be. I think I think I'm there next week. Yeah. OK, well, then never mind, Sean. You're fucked. <laughs> I think November, you can own me big time because yeah. I'm not going to be. Here <laughs> true, true. All right. Let's go into the next story. Uh, this one was posted on Am I the Asshole? Uh, by IC Midscore Improvement Midscore four two five eight, and the title is oh sorry, it was posted on our subreddit. My apologies, Ooh. my apologies, listeners. This was you. Uh, so IC Midscore Improvement Midscore four two five eight. Am I the asshole for not wanting my disabled sister wearing white to my wedding? Wait, you said posted. So is this a li- listener? It's listener. Yeah. Oh, automatic. Not the asshole. <laughs> Just hedging your bets there. <laughs> Play my odds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, not wanting people to wear white to your wedding is a pretty standard thing, I think. It, 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 is, it is a standard rule, but, you know, it's a listener set story. There's got to be a plot twist here where they're not going to be deemed an asshole at all. So, if, okay. I'll well, go with let's, that. <laughs> let's hop into it. So, I, 23 female, am getting married to my fiance, 24 male, in around two months. I asked all of my bridesmaids to wear light purple to my wedding. For more context, I am the oldest of four. My two younger twin siblings are both 21, who we'll call Amy and John. And my youngest sister is 17, who we'll call Abby. Abby has severe mental disability, which has affected her and and our whole family's lives. I asked all of my bridesmaids to wear light purple to my wedding. Abby, however, was hesitant and asked me, do I need to wear a dress? Abby never liked dresses, so it hurt me to tell her that yes, and I would really appreciate it if she wore a dress. I also told her she didn't need to wear a super poofy dress like the other girls, but that she could wear something more comfortable. I reached out to my mother afterwards asking if she could take Abby dress shopping because I was too busy with wedding preparations. Uh, Later, my mom sent me a photo with Abby in a dress, and it wasn't purple dress like I asked her to pick. Instead, it was a literal wedding dress. (sighs) Oh, yeah. I asked her what this was, and my mom replied, this is the dress Abby is going to wear to the wedding. I asked her if this was a joke, and she said no. I asked her where she got the money because I only gave her $200, and she said she paid for it herself. I told my mom I didn't want anyone but me wearing white to the wedding and that we could pick out the same dress for her but in purple, but that it wasn't okay that she thought Abby could wear white to my wedding. After this, she got super upset with me and told me I was being selfish and unreasonable and asked Abby to wear a dress and that this was the one she picked out. She said I was being an asshole for not letting her wear something that would make her feel comfortable. I told her that I knew she wouldn't let Amy wear white to my wedding, so I asked her why Abby was any different. My mom said that because she is disabled, she should get a certain right that Amy or I wouldn't have. I got angry at her and told her that Abby shouldn't be treated any differently in these situations because of her disability, and I wouldn't let her wear white to my wedding. End of discussion. My mother, after hearing this, gave me an ultimatum that I would either let Abby wear the dress or both of them, Abby and my mom, would not be coming to the wedding. I was shocked that she would go this far because of a dress, so I told her I would think about it, but I still didn't want Abby at my wedding in white. So am I the asshole for not wanting my disabled sister at my wedding with a white dress? Damn. (laughs) A lot trickier than I thought it would be. Um, You said not the asshole, right? Yeah. I said not the asshole. And I I think I'm going to kind of stick with that. I think the biggest villain here is the mom that's where i'm at because i think i okay. agree with your initial like it's her wedding right she should be allowed right. to deem what she wants at her wedding especially someone not wearing white to her wedding yeah um, i think the biggest thing here is she's communicating through her mom which i think is the biggest issue and we had a lot of commenters comment this i'll get to one later but okay um op uh, op our listener uh should try talking to Abby directly and maybe explaining the situation to her. 
because I feel like true she's a person, right? You can you can talk. Yeah, to her. and <laughs> and and they put that context that you know she wanted to treat her like you know like an equal with everybody. So I think yeah. that would be a good step to talk to her directly instead of a you know like a middleman. Exactly. Essentially well, and, doing it. Yeah. Yeah, and a middleman that's like, uh, you know. I, I don't know why she has these motives, but is defend like defending the right for her to wear a white wedding dress, which is not okay. Uh, so yeah, I would go directly to Abby and just be like, Hey, like this isn't normal at a wedding. Like you can't uh, uh, like it's a faux pas basically. And then explain mm-hmm. it better than I can. You know, your sister better than I do. So <laughs> I True. Uh, explain yeah, I it with that. so that she understands and that hopefully that maybe how do, I know you're busy too. But maybe you can like look for a dress with her instead of ta- your mom taking her. Um, it's super fucked up of your mom to dig her heels in and not even try to negotiate with you. Uh, that, that's kind of like the vibe I'm getting. And initial thoughts for me, like just hearing this, I feel like, and I could be totally off base. And and with me, I'm, I'm 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 more I'm more than happy for like constructive feedback, right? Like I feel like the mom is weaponizing the sister's disability in this situation. Like, I don't know what like the severity of this disability is, right? Like at this yeah. point, like I'm just assuming. Um, I think like the mom is low key, possibly like projecting in a way, like maybe they'll will never have get to see the opportunity to see that daughter like walk, like, you know, in a wedding dress. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of just wanted to see that. Um, that was kind of just like where my head was going in terms of like selfishly, why she was kind of uh, very adamant and defensive, uh, uh, defensive about it. Yeah, um, I didn't even think of that. But again, again, it's just pure speculation at this point. Um, but yeah, I, I just think your mom, like, you know, low key set your sister up for for failure. Because right, because like, mm-hmm. it, let, let's say she was like, let, let's say the the OP was like, okay, sure, yeah, you can go to the wedding in a white dress, right? people might not know who your sister is and like what her condition is. And people are just going to glare. People are going to look like, Oh, why yeah. the fuck is she wearing white? You know? And you're just, you're just, uh, she was just setting her up like to, to get ostracized or like get looked at in ways that, you know, you shouldn't in a social setting. Um, so I, I, I I'm still sticking to not the asshole at this point. Like I think we both agree. Well, either Josh, way, that, I, think, like, I think either way, OP is not the asshole, right? Yeah. Cause, cause it's wedding. her wedding <laughs> at the end of the day. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I, I'm just getting the vibe. Like, I wouldn't really necessarily call the mother villain now uh, at this point because I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm assuming like right, like what based on yeah. the point I made. Um, so I, I just think she made like a wrong like stance to like really dig her heels in, like just what you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I think the initial, you know, I, I don't know. I, I uh, am up in the air whether the mom's an asshole. I personally maybe lean more towards she is just because. Really? Uh, okay. Just, just like. I don't know to to cause an ultimatum to be like okay your sister's not coming to the wedding then is a bold like thing to to say and like pretty assholeish to to put that in because then you're just ruining your daughter's wedding for her. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Even if this like even if you said she she has these fears of her daughter maybe not getting married, which is I, I founded in I have no idea what, but um, potentially that could be what she's feeling why ruin your other daughter's wedding? <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? Yeah, uh, exactly. So that's kind of where I leaned. Um, and I think a lot of our Wikimaniacs leaned uh, that way as well. They said, not the asshole. Many of them in our, our comment section, uh, granted, I didn't go through all 200 or so comments, but majority of them were saying there's that. a lot <laughs> typically I bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and shout then, out to mid score for man, <laughs> almost what? 90,000 like people. It's, are crazy. Right now? Yeah. it's nuts. <laughs> Uh, I had a comment the other day where someone, I think on YouTube was like, I did, I was on, I've been following the subreddit for months. Didn't even know this was a podcast. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Would it be nuts if we had 90,000 90, uh, listener like a week? That'd be crazy. <laughs> would be I nuts. want that for us. <laughs> uh, so then uh, one of our commenters, uh, I think sums up what we've been saying pretty nicely. Mm-hmm. They say, uh, oh, sorry, AAMDW. Eight six says, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Did you ask Abby if she would wear purple or another color instead of white, or was just this between you and your mom?" Parents have a terrible habit of infantilizing their disabled children, and people often forget that you can actually talk to the person. Which I think, yep. yeah, communication directly with Agreed. your sister is the for sure 
best way forward to see what she wants and how she feels about this. She might not even know. It could have been the first one she picked. We have no idea. Yeah. Uh, so. And, and now I think about it, wild that the mom decided to spend extra money on the on a wedding dress. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It, you it's might a little. Be, I, I might be leaning more your side now, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, yeah, it just. OP is definitely not the asshole. That's where that's for all sure. we need to know for our judgment. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, you're three for three so far. Uh, we'll go one more and you get the one point. How about that? Yes. Just so that because we're doing six. I'll today. take it. So this one's posted by Adept Lower Score Add Lower Score four two five six on Am I the asshole? The title is Am I the asshole for telling my son he needs to get over us missing his wedding? Back to back wedding Damn. stories. Ah. <sighs> needs to get over well i'm gonna I'm stay consistent with uh with this i always don't like the word like get over something so i'll mm-hmm. probably go asshole for this one okay okay yeah i could see sean probably going that way as well <laughs> yeah he hates like he picks out those words in, in the title and yeah uh, yeah so i like it let's hop into it and see so my son got married a few years ago and he lives on the other side of the country from us He got a great job opportunity after college, so he moved down. Two years ago, he got married to Jenny, and from what I heard, it was a beautiful wedding. The issue started when we were trying to get there. The wedding was on a Saturday, and our plane left Thursday night. Well, it got delayed, and then delayed four more times. By this point, it's Friday morning, and then all the planes got canceled due to a storm. When this happened... Damn! Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I mean, uh, two years ago it was also like COVID. Really crazy COVID. Yeah. yeah. So lots of cancellations. Damn. Yeah. Damn, I'm not going to get that extra point. <laughs> well, you still got two more stories, but. Uh, uh, that's true. Uh, yeah. So uh, crazy. Yeah. I, it would have been a crazy time then. And then add a storm to that. Tough. That's a tough one. Oh, it very much so. So when all that happened, it was clear that we were not leaving and driving there would take too long and we would miss the st- ceremony. So we informed him and he was pissed. We sent our well wishes and we could FaceTime if he wanted to. He told us no and we saw a video of him getting married. Now the present day issue is anytime we get into an argument or he wants us to do something, he pulls out the we missed his wedding card. Ah. We were talking over the phone and we were talking about hosting Thanksgiving this year. He got mad asking why won't you visit us and I told him we didn't have the money for the trip and we just saw him in July. Uh, and then says, we do go visit him. <laughs> so we got into an argument and he pulled out the, you missed our wedding. It's the least you can do. I told him enough and that he needs to get over it. He called me a jerk and my daughter uh, learned about this and she's on our side. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> I don't know how to read. <laughs> I, well, I don't think it's not a sentence. I'm, I'm reading it here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> my daughter learned about this and I'm not sure if she's on our side. I think that's what he's trying to say. And then adds an edit. We looked at other airports where the planes were grounded. Uh, we are from Maine and the storm was going through our state and then riding down the East Coast. We weren't Oof. getting a flight. And yes, we looked. It basically blocked travel for two days. If we didn't go down a, a state or two, we would be following the storm and wouldn't be getting a flight. Uh, so they did look into other means of getting there. They tried. Uh, so am I the asshole? There you go, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take an L for this one. I'm going to say no. And... uh well, damn, Jackie, I can't control the weather. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Kelso or, was the asshole in that situation. <laughs> uh, that's true. But wait, wait. They said the fiance's name is Jenny, right? Damn, yeah. I just said, well, damn, Jenny, I can't control the weather. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they, they, they tried their best, you know, like uh, it, it does happen. Um, if they were, here's the thing. I'm not going to say like the parents are the asshole in this situation, uh, just because like you said, uh, uh, if that was a couple years ago, COVID factoring with a with a storm you know could they have gotten a little earlier maybe but you know it is what it is at this point like a lot of times like we're at the mercy of like schedule of like their air like aircraft industry and all that yeah um well and and the whole thing back then was like there's a lot of issues with like rebooking and yeah that too and it's like i don't know like i look out uh like on my weather app it'll be 10 days out it'll say rain you never know. It could stop. You could never change know. a million exactly. times. Uh, so they were probably just hoping for the best and that their plane would still take off. 
Yeah, um, and, and it's not like they just went and go like, oh, can't make the flight, bye. Dude, they got canceled four times. They looked at different avenues. Yeah. At that point, I'm okay with it being like a running joke, but like to weaponize that and use it as like, well, it's the least you can do when they just visited you, buddy. Why the fuck <laughs> you can't visit your parents, dog? Like it's, yeah. you know, it's, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm more than happy to take an L for that one. I will say this as like, as someone who's about to get married, I would be very upset if my parents weren't able to make it. Oh, facts. And yeah, so me too. I, I do understand like him feeling a certain type of way about that. No matter like mm-hmm. I, I would never weaponize that against my parents, but mm-hmm. you would feel some, a certain type of way. Like it's like, Oh, like one of the biggest moments in my life and my parents weren't there for it. That sucks. Um, it does. Yeah. And so I, I understand that uh, from his side that doesn't give him a pass to no. keep holding that over you because it wasn't your fault. Um, but yeah, you got I like just, a one time grace period. You know? You're like one time you can be you mad about one it. One year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One year and limited pass. And then after that, buddy, you might have to get over it. <laughs> yeah. Well, not get over it, but just stop holding it over your parents. You're holding it uh, against them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously, people deemed not the asshole. Um, there is a bit more context here because coastal kid 92 says not the asshole. Sounds like you and your husband made all the reasonable efforts to get there and it just wasn't going to happen. Personally, I still would have driven at least have, uh, gone to the reception and celebrate, but that's just me. That being said, this is a big milestone you miss and it's going to take some time for him to get over it, but it's not fair for him to use it as a weapon against you and your spouse. Anytime things don't go his way, he needs to find a way to make peace with the situation without lording it over you all the time. Uh, and then OP comments, uh, we thought about this, but we wouldn't be able to make the 37 hour drive. Golly. Windstorm? Well, I'm guessing, uh, well, I'm guessing it's like, he said he was in Maine, right? Or she Maine, said right? she so, was in Maine and I'm guessing okay. they're in Florida somewhere. Probably. Yeah. That's a long drive, buddy. It's a long drive. <laughs> that's a long drive. So, uh, Uh, We didn't feel like it was the safest option since the storm was happening and it's a super long drive without brakes. We would have had to do it with no brakes to get there for the party. And even then we were unsure we would make it. Um, So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's tough. It's a tough situation. Uh, You don't want to. uh, Logistically, there's probably no rentals either at that point. If there's a bunch of cancellations, probably no rental cars. Well, presumably they were driving their car to the airport. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> but, but I wouldn't drive then, my personal car. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. But even then it's like, say OP and their spouse like drove down and something happened. Like then your son would have, would feel way worse about that. You True. know what I mean? So it's, it's a, it's a lose, lose situation in this case for me, man. If I was the son, I'd be like, Hey, for when we renew our vows, you're paying for all of it. That's my <laughs> compromise. <laughs> that's the that's the payback just get them back just get them back like weaponize it that way so that way they can at least be there next time yeah fair enough fair enough um all right well we got two more stories and then we got the patreon exclusive stories uh but we're gonna hit a quick ad break and we'll be right back all right john three one and (sighs) oh uh this we're gonna hop into the next one and see if you can uh, get squeak out a point here, or if we're going to do a reverse sweep on the back end of this <laughs> story. Damn it. Uh, so this one's posted by spiritual oh, it's a lis- listener story again. No, no, no. This post on am I the asshole? Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. There's so many good. Am I the asshole stories this week? I had a very hard time choosing <laughs> from both Damn. our subreddit and the actual subreddit. They're getting juicy now. Yeah. So this one's posted on am I the asshole by spiritual lower score assist. 6468. And the title is, Am I the asshole for not being happy that my little sister is getting married? Hmm. Uh, I feel like they're probably don't like the guy that they're, they're about to marry, but they, they might have like the approach might have been like, there was probably like an altercation for them to be like, yeah, I'm not fucking happy that you're getting married to this guy. Right. And like they came to blows. With that said, though, I think I'm going not the asshole. Okay. <laughs> that was a Took me a while. <laughs> Took me, it, uh, cause if you, I mean, you know, like sometimes, sometimes you just got to be happy. I don't have siblings, but like sometimes you just got to be happy for people because I feel like they made like a grown ass decision to do that. But. 
uh, at times you do have to protect people from themselves. If like you feel like they're, you know, going down a, a questionable decision, a questionable decision. Yeah. So yeah. What did I say again? Did I say not the asshole. You said not the asshole. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's stick with not the asshole. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's hop into it and see if you can get that point, John. God damn That was a hard one. John. <laughs> <laughs> Last two were hard. Uh, so I, 28 female, am not happy for my little sister, 19 female, getting married. We don't have any family left other than distant uncles who live across the country and couldn't care less about us. I have tried to be the best role model I could for her since we lost our parents so young, but I feel like I failed. My little sister met this cook at the restaurant she works at, and I don't care what he does for a living. It has nothing to do with that, but he's 39. <laughs> That's 20 years. It's an easy math here. I'll do it for you. <laughs> oh, where's Sean when you need him? <laughs> the Sean rule. Oh, God. Damn. So she goes on to say he's 39 years old and just put a ring on my 19 year old little sister's finger. I met him once before and didn't realize he was that old. And to be honest, he looks good for his age. But I also didn't think they would end up together, so I didn't think to press on it. She is constantly dating all these men, probably to make up for her severe daddy issues that I also have, but we don't need to get into that. I feel terrible because my sister was excited to tell me she's engaged, and I flipped out on her. I told her how disgusting it is that he's an old man, and that she wouldn't be able to live her life the way she wants to with a guy like that. She left my house crying and won't answer me. It's been two weeks. Am I the asshole? I'm split on this, Josh, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah. I will say this though. It's a tough one. You caring about the the optics and the situation, I gotta say, not the asshole, right? right. Well, caring uh, about uh, your sister, absolutely. Caring about your sister, asshole. absolutely not the asshole, right? Yeah. I can see where the concern is. The approach, questionable. I think uh, <laughs> definitely I, the wrong uh, way to go about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it's a big question mark for me. I think yeah. because if you were really that close with your sister, right, and like you, you, um, uh, like you're all, you're all you have, like that's you're basically the family. I, I think the better approach would have been like sat down with your sister and just be like, hey, this is the situation. You're 19. Homeboy is pushing 40, right? ARP mm -hmm. coming pretty soon. Like, yeah. <laughs> you need to think about this. Like if this is, is, if this is the right step for you, um, would you consider like, maybe this guy groomed you, you know, like you're 19, you have, you have a, a life to live still. Why would yeah. you be want to tie, be tied down with someone when, you know, you probably haven't experienced college yet. You probably don't know what you want in your life yet. Why are you going to tie yourself down to someone who, you know, like it, I'm going to say it to a predator <laughs> yeah. at that point. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, I'm still, I would like to stick with the not the asshole still because I think the the care for your sister like uh, supersedes everything. But I am going to be like, you're a little icky <laughs> for your approach. So that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, I think, I think the, the thing is, it's, you're not the asshole for caring. But yes, as you said, John, your approach uses work. Like you should come yeah. at it of a point of support. But also like, hey, maybe consider this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like blowing really up. Think about this. Not good. Yeah. Because like you said, she's 19. We have no idea what this guy, like uh, your sister works with him for I don't know how many years. It could be like one of those situations where he's groomed her and uh, waited until she was 19 to propose. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a weird situation. I 100% agree with OP. Uh, but yeah, you kind of fucked up in the way you approached it. Um, I will say that. Yeah. So it's like, it's not a half point because I'm calling her not the asshole and asshole at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I got know. a decimal. I got a decimal. <laughs> I mean, either way, it gets you the the point you need. So <laughs> uh, True, true, uh, true. Yeah. So uh, uh, Reddit deemed not the asshole. Um, okay. Okay. It, it was more split. Uh, in the comments just because they were like, you know, not the asshole, but exactly what we said kind of thing. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, 
And I have a comment here that kind of matches that. Uh, Miss Weasley nine says, oof, I agree. That is a terrible match. There's a reason this 39 year old man wants a woman so young and naive, but you had to know that flipping out about something she was so happy with, uh, wasn't going to go well. It would have served you both much better to grit your teeth, congratulate her and share your concerns gently the next day. You're not the asshole for being uh, not happy. You can't be the asshole for having those feelings, but you're the asshole because you took those feelings out and flipped on her. So yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> it's a tough it one. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. Let I us can know. definitely see. Yeah. I can definitely see it could go either way. You know what I mean? So, well, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a weird one, but I'll give you the point five just so that you can get the point. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll throw it up it. on the board here. For you. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yay. Uh, all right. Let's hop into the last one here. Uh, before we get into the Patreon stories, uh, this one's cross posted by one of our newest goats outside lower score Flamingo lower score two, four, six. Nice. They had two that uh, are another one that almost made the episode today as well. So um, I got to spread the love though outside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the title for this one is, am I the asshole for telling my ex-wife we aren't a team and I'm the only one who can make parental decisions? I'm trying to break this down. So they're an ex. Yes. Okay. I don't know. To me, it sounds like the ex-partner is probably an uninvolved parent or they were like a piece of shit. So I can understand why. OP probably said what they said. So I'm going to go not the asshole for this one. Okay. I like it. Uh, Let's hop into it and see if you're correct here. So good morning, everyone posting this on here because I've been not the asshole because they're polite already. (laughs) God damn. That's not always true. (laughs) That's That's definitely not always true. (laughs) Uh, I've been extremely conflicted on this last argument with my ex. I don't want to diminish her accomplishments and I hope it doesn't come across that way in this post. That being said, when I was young, I married who I thought was my soulmate and had two kids together, a daughter and a son. Unfortunately, I didn't know my wife was an addict slash alcoholic when we married. She hit it extremely well until a few years in. I began noticing patterns and eventually confronted her. We split when the oldest was three and she signed over custody. So goddamn, John, you shot, you channeled Sean in this, uh, <laughs> this prediction. Uh, I know she ended up being homeless after a while because her parents didn't want anything to do with her. I did not know anything besides that. She contacted me about a year back and told me she was three years sober and had a stable job and a home. I checked with her family and everything. And, sh- and yeah, she was telling the truth. She really wanted to meet her kids. And while I was a little upset by the, her kids line, I eventually decided it wasn't my decision to make and left it up to the kids who are now 16 male and 17 female. They decided they wanted to meet her. And that was that they've been hanging out with her about twice a week. And I let her come over for dinner almost every night. Uh, no sleepovers at her place as of now. And so far they kind of have an antish relationship with her, but they do seem to be enjoying it, which brings me to our conflict. I am far from being a great dad, but I believe I am a good dad. I built a trust with my kids through therapy and heart to heart over the years. They're fairly popular at their school and they recently got invited to a party that I gave them the go ahead to go to. I've spoken to them about the dangers of alcohol slash drugs, etc., And they know I'm always available to pick them up in a situation they don't want to be in. They also know why me and their mom split up. My kids came home around 11 and just, and just gave me the teen type rundown who was there. They couldn't believe what, who did what blah, blah, blah. They were also honest with me and told me they tried jello shots, which they thought were gross. That was the end of that. They weren't drunk. They weren't buzz. They tried a drink and that was it. They were there for two hours and came home. It's a pretty lame party. <laughs> fucking boring ass party. That's it. Where's the handy app, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sounds like I didn't come home for parties. <laughs> yeah. I woke up somewhere else. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this is why I don't drink anymore, uh, guys, because I'd start drinking so young. <laughs> uh, well, I guess they brought up the party in front of their mother that following breakfast meetup. She was livid. She tried to ground them from electronics and socializing for two weeks. They said it was really awkward and asked me to pick them up without much details. While they were there in the car, I went to speak with her. And when she told me what she said, I honestly laughed. I asked her what gave her the right. She responded that she wanted to be the mother to her kids and that I should give her the chance to parent. 
but that she's giving 100% to this to make this work. I told her it was way too late for that. The kids are basically adults, have part-time jobs, pay for their phones, bills, clothes, uh, and he puts in brackets, by choice, and are deep into their plans for adulthood. She then told me I was robbing her uh, her chance to make things right and asked what's the point of letting her into their lives if I wasn't letting her be a mom. That we needed to be a team because she needs my support. And here's where I might be the asshole. I told her the kids are well past the age of asking me why mommy doesn't love them when crawling into my bed at night and that she was welcome to leave again. As far as being a team, the only team is me and my kids. I'm their parent. They listen to me and respect me because I've listened and respected to them their whole life. We have not spoken since then, now going on a week and a half. She has still texted the kids good morning and good night messages, but has skipped two meetups they usually have so far. So am I the asshole? I'm going to go with no. Um, I'm going to still say no in this situation because you're absolutely right. You are. You were the sole parent for a long time, right? And I, I'm so happy to hear that you, you've you built like equity and trust with your kids. Like, you know, they probably went to some through something like, you know, negative growing up and, you know, you did the amicable thing of letting them go to therapy, right? Uh, being an advocate for your kids and letting them know like what the realities of, of like alcohol and like partying and all that. And you were very um, upfront with them saying like, Hey, if, if you ever need a ride, I'm here for you as a resource. A lot of parents don't do that. A lot of parents are very like authoritarian in their ways of of like parenting and you built so much equity with your kids that like they trust you. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, with that, with that said, uh, I feel for the mother, you know, like, uh, addiction is such a strong battle that someone has to go, go through. And I, I, quite frankly, I'm proud of her for, it seems like she, she beat that. Right. Like, or she's on her way to like really turning her life around. Uh, however you miss most of your kids, like, uh, developing years, right? Like, and the mm-hmm. father's right. They are adults at this point and they can make uh, choices for their, their themselves. And um, as much as it sucks and as much as you want to be part of that, y- you you just missed the boat, buddy. So uh, uh, I, I think the father is completely on the right in this situation. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't say much better than you could there. Uh, yeah, not the asshole. Um, that's also what Reddit deemed. Um, oh. And then I have a comment here that sums up basically what you said, but add something that I think you'll like. So, uh, walk you Pepin says, I feel for the mom, but wow. Talk about delusion. Sounds like everyone was very generous, opening themselves up for the possibility of a connection. And she massively overplayed her hand. This is the sentence. I think you'll like trust and intimacy are earned, not inherited. Ooh, that's a good line. (laughs) I dropped my mic, but I don't want to get disconnected. So uh, here's, here's my mouse. I'm dropping it. (laughs) Yeah. Cause that in the, at the end, that's what it is, right? They, these kids don't know you as their mom. They, Mm -hmm. uh, you could get there someday potentially. Um, but you are not their parent and, uh, this, that trust, uh, has not been built. You have to go through that, uh, Oh, yeah. years and it's only up to them if they end up trusting you uh so yeah i mean it's not the end of the world like walk you pep and said you overplayed your hand <laughs> but you have you did uh but like you know like devil's advocate here like i i see where like i see why she kind of like reacted that way because you know like she to me like I see that she or you know like the kids were like hey like we were at a party we were drinking yada yada like I I feel like something in her was like it was just legitimately concerned right saying like oh my god like I went through struggles with like alcoholism and all that right and they 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 just like um what's that term that I heard from like uh, therapy because catastrophizing everything I don't know if, mm. like, yeah catastrophizing the situation right right um where where like if she was really into their lives they know that the the dad already kind of gave them a rundown, like, hey, this is this was could happen. Let me be here for you if, if shit pops off, right? So I think she just missed the mark and I think she just catastrophized the situation. So Right. I'm I'm um, not saying I don't understand why she Oh yeah, 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 like, yeah. For sure, for sure. Broke there. I'm just saying like she She was has trying to, to be a mom, right? <laughs> she was, but she has to trust that uh their father has been taking care mm-hmm. of this. That he's, you know, put them on the right path. Uh yeah. Because no one else was there for them except for him. And so absolutely. Yeah. I, I do feel for her and I understand why she probably freaked out in that moment. Uh, 
but you know, still, still not in the right to uh, try and parent them because uh, the, the trust isn't there as, uh, as we've said. I must say like we, we do get a lot of shitty dads in this situation, but the few, the few one, the few good ones that we hear I, wholesome as shit, man. Yeah. I, 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 I do like that. Absolutely. I do like, I do like to like when we get, you know, we, we like to shit on people, right? And women, <laughs> I don't care what, like, I don't, we don't care, but it's, you know, it's, it's nice to hear that there's like some good, good guys out there. Stories. <laughs> good men out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We do focus on, well, I mean, they're just uh, prevalent in Reddit, uh, shitty men stories. So I mean, nice guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> We had a, there we are had good a, guys out there, people. Yeah, there are. We had an equal balance today, I feel. So it was uh it I was feel nice. like. <laughs> All right. And that is it, Wikimaniacs. What did you think today? Were these people assholes? Let us know down in the comments on YouTube, Discord, or on our subreddit. Uh, if you want to hear three more stories, because John and Ooh, I... Ooh, it's good to be rich, baby. We, we threw it back. Uh, for a Patreon. <laughs> yeah. And we did three stories uh, on patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network. Uh, you can go there and listen to those as well as bonus episodes, extra stories every Friday and tons of other bonus content. Uh, don't forget, you can submit your own Am I the Asshole stories to our subreddit, r slash Reddit on Wiki. You can also cross post of your favorite Am I the Asshole stories there. That is it, John. Thank you for coming on, taking a point. We love to see it. Uh, could have been we, two. Could have been fucker. two. Could have been two. <laughs> Stop uh, me there. <laughs> we will be back Monday. Just me and Sean, though. So uh, say bye to John for a week. And we'll see you on Monday. Bye. Bye. People always tell my parents, why Why you only have one? And I'm like, yeah, because I'm good enough, right? Like, I'm <laughs> fine by my fucking self. I'm perfect. <laughs> I'm all they fucking need, all right? Shit. Uh. <laughs>